make sure you've got InDesign open and make sure that you can see the folio overlays in the folio builder panel. If you want to in CS6, you can come to digital publishing once again for that workspace and set that if you want to. Otherwise, you will find the panels under window. Click on the folio builder panel on the right and you will most likely, you won't see much in here in this panel when you first start this. You'll actually probably see some text or something that says, hey, you can sign in if you want to or something similar to that. Now, the reason why is because you haven't built any yet. Okay, that kind of makes sense, hopefully. We can build just about as many as we want. A folio, like I've already mentioned several times, is sort of like a testing app. It's on your way to building an app. A folio is a collection of InDesign files and all the content, and everything necessary to be able to be saved to an app, okay? A folio is your working app. So if we go in here, what we can do is we can create an app. All the apps you are working on are listed right here and they are called, I'm gonna call them folios because that's what, technically what they are. Now, what happens is when you create a folio, it's gonna link to the InDesign files on your hard drive somewhere or whatever they, wherever they happen to be. So if you create a folio, and later on you go to work on it, you better be able to find the InDesign files. So you wanna put your InDesign files somewhere where you're not gonna move them all the time or put them on an external disk or something where you might not have it attached. There are two types of folios that we can create or work with, or two ways, I guess you can say, to work with them. You can create offline folios and online folios. An offline folio is a folio that you can edit locally. And if you look right here, if I hover over this one, it says, file status local. All of these are local. That means I created it. It pretty much all the files and everything lives on my hard drive. I can edit it at any time. If I want to share it with someone, I will upload it or make it a, um, a different type of folio. And we will get to that in just a little while. So to begin with, we're going to create what's called an offline folio so we can work with it. So to create our folio with your folio builder panel open, come down to the bottom. And there's a bunch of ways to do this. You'll see create new folio. You'll also see up here, you're gonna be using this quite a bit, this little panel menu right here, you're gonna see new folio. Either way, click new folio. It's gonna open up this dialog box and we're gonna see a lot of things that we're gonna to wanna to work with. So first and foremost is the folio name. And this is pretty important. Uh, it's something you're gonna remember. Um, it's something we can change later on if we want to, but let's name it right now. So I'm gonna call this something like Pinnacle, it makes something that makes sense to you, okay? Pinnacle Playground, maybe. All right. And if, if you have different versions of something, you can call it a versioning or something like that for folio name. This is for you to keep track of. Viewer version, if you click on the number right there, your number may actually be different than what you see here, depending on how much later you're watching these videos. But if you click on the viewer version, you're going to come up with this dialog box, and you're going to see a menu pop up. If you haven't updated your software, all of your, uh, the DPS tools that is, then you may not see these versions or you may see newer ones if you're watching this later. I just updated. It's, um, what is it? It's January, end of January, 2013. And they just came out with viewer version 25. And what you want to do most of the time is you want to pick the latest viewer version, the, the biggest number. That's going to give you the most bang. Usually it's going to make it better because they always improve these things, but you have to be careful. Because for instance, right now I can't choose 25 because I can't test it anywhere. It, it, nothing's been updated yet. This just came out like two days ago. So you need to be careful with doing this. 24 is the absolute minimum I want to choose. Okay, now the reason why is it's better. Okay, I'll just leave it at that. We don't need to go into this, but I'll choose 24. I'll click OK. Now you got to be careful here. You can't change it to a lower version later on if you want to. Okay, you have to rebuild the folio. So I'll click OK. Target device, as a um, as working a, with a single edition, we only have iPad to work with. So that's all we're going to figure. There's your size. Now, the pages you create in InDesign, in your InDesign files, must match this size exactly. It can't be 1024 by 767. Otherwise, it won't accept them. Now, you got to choose an orientation. Remember, we kept talking about dual orientation versus one locking orientation, that pinnacle I showed you, uh, the pinnacle app. If you want it to be dual orientation, you're gonna choose that right now. So click on the one you want. If you wanna lock it into an orientation, you're gonna choose one of these. If you choose dual orientation, that means that you either have two versions of every InDesign file, vertical and horizontal, or you've got the alternate layouts inside of the InDesign file or a combination of the two. 
Now you're gonna see right here. Now you gotta set that. It won't let you go without it, but you're gonna see right here something called right edge binding. If you don't understand something, you can always click on the little information thing and it'll show you what it's talking about. It'll go right to left rather than left to right. And I tend not to do this. It's special purposes, special cases. You can always test it and see. Right down here, default format. It chose PDF for me because of the viewer version. This is for the format for rather the design content. All the static stuff, your design, your text, your images, things that aren't going to move, things that, that, that are not part of the what are called the overlays or the interactive content. You see, when, when you build an app, you technically have, let's say, the design content or the stuff underneath that gets flattened. Uh, gets flattened out into JPEG or PNG or whatever it decides. Basically pictures. This is what it used to do way back when. Or now we have PDF we can choose. And what that means is all your design content can be converted to PDF content, which means it'll look better in all the different um, iPad you know, uh, versions, if you will. So if you have retina display or non-retina display, it scales that content. And a PDF content can be scaled better. It looks better. But it can be a little bigger. depends on what you're doing. So 